Not all those who wander are lost. This beautiful quote comes from one of my favorite book trilogies of all time, The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. This quote perfectly describes the feeling I got when I was exploring the vast world of Hollow Knight. The game is filled with beautiful landscapes and mysterious architecture that can draw the player into its world. These landscapes are the subject of today's video. Specifically, I want to take time to talk about how the game handles backtracking, and why people don't mind backtracking in Hollow Knight or any other similar Metroidvania, but find it off-putting in many other games. Without further ado, let's begin. Before moving on to talk about Hollow Knight, I want to talk about backtracking as a whole to understand why many players don't find backtracking enjoyable in other genres, as well as defining what I mean by backtracking. According to Merriam-Webster, backtracking is defined as to retrace one's course, to go back to an earlier point in a sequence, or to reverse a position. In games, this translates to going through the same levels without significant changes to the level structure. This isn't inherently a bad thing, as we will see later, but oftentimes it can be boring and tedious for the player to go over old ground. At its worst, it is pointless filler that doesn't add anything to the experience. However, as I said, backtracking isn't inherently a bad thing. For example, Hotline Miami forces the player to walk back to the start of the level after the player finishes their objective. This is clearly backtracking, but Hotline Miami uses this time to force the player to reflect over their actions and think about what they have done, helping to drive home the narrative themes of the game. There is one question which I am hoping to explore in this video. Backtracking might be tolerable in some games, but what positive elements can backtracking add to a game that improve the experience as a whole? With this in mind, let's dive in and look at backtracking in Metroidvania design. One of the main ways that Metroidvanias try to make backtracking interesting is through the design of their collectibles and how the game gives these to the player. Usually, the player might come across some upgrade that is inaccessible to them with their current abilities, and they must come back later to collect that reward. This method of backtracking exists within almost every Metroidvania game ever released, and Hollow Knight is no exception. The game has grubs, charms, relics, lore, geo, and ore that can be found when the player backtracks through an area. These collectibles go a long way towards encouraging players to backtrack through previous areas of the game. However, it is important to note that encouraging the player to do something through the promise of a reward doesn't necessarily make the act of backtracking rewarding. It just means that players are willing to put up with it because they get a shiny new toy to play with if they do it. I would compare this to grinding for experience in an RPG. Sure, players do it, but they really only do it in an attempt to level up their characters. The act of grinding itself isn't a super engaging activity, but players will do it anyway. The same thing could be said for backtracking through old areas to pick up items that the player couldn't reach before. I bring this up to dispel the notion that backtracking can be made meaningful simply by presenting the player with incentives for doing it. Theoretically, a game could reward an action the player can do in a game, but that suddenly doesn't make that action meaningful or interesting. Instead, we should look at the other aspects of the game design to see how backtracking can be made more interesting. To talk about how Hollow Knight makes backtracking more engaging, we need to talk about the concept of layered level design. Layered level design is a kind of level design where the ways that a player can interact and move through a level changes based on the player's current set of abilities. Mario is a great example of layered level design. For instance, in World 1-2, as small Mario, the player is limited to the lower path because they cannot break bricks. As large Mario, the player might find it much harder to take the lower path since it forces them to duck and slide. Nothing about the level itself changes, but the way that the player interacts with that level 
is drastically different based on their power-ups. Hollow Knight makes great use of layered level design, and it is one of the main ways that it makes backtracking more interesting. Hollow Knight is a Metroidvania, and this means that the player will be gaining all sorts of new abilities throughout the game. Many of these abilities will give the player new movement options that change the way the player can move through levels. Hollow Knight makes excellent use of these abilities, not only in future areas, but also in areas that the player has already explored. For example, look at this area in Green Path. The first time the player explores this area, they need to take the lower path, which will lead to the player getting ambushed by bushes. Very clever. However, once the player gets the dash ability, they will be able to reach the upper path any time they go through this area in the future. This kind of level design appears throughout Hollow Knight, and these layered levels ensure that going through old areas is a new experience for the player on a level-to-level -level basis. This kind of level design perfectly fits the Metroidvania style, because of the way these games give out their power-ups. When players start a Metroidvania, they are going to have a much more limited set of abilities than at the end of the game, and Hollow Knight is no exception to this. The first time players go through an area, there will probably be several places they cannot reach. Team Cherry was clever with the placement of these paths that the player cannot access immediately. Usually, these areas go out of their way to be memorable and stick out in the player's memory. Sometimes, these blocked paths use unique or new elements to block the player's progress, such as this Elder Baldur, or these Void Walls. Since the player has never encountered these before, they're going to leave quite the impression on the player. Some of the other areas aren't quite as flashy, but they still tend to get the player's attention because the player knows that there is something hidden behind this obstacle that is just out of their reach. The reason I'm talking about how the player remembers the previous areas is because it ties in well with my next point about the levels of Hollow Knight. As I was talking about before, the levels are designed to be different based on what power-ups the player has. However, there's a little more to it than that. You see, whenever a player acquires a new power-up, this change recontextualizes all of the space that the player has already explored. Suddenly, the player is thinking back to the rest of the game to see what this new ability might open up. This might encourage players to return to old areas, not because they feel forced to, in order to progress, but because they want to know what is down this new path. This rewards the player for paying attention to the world around them, and thinking about how it fits together. Player-driven and motivated backtracking is far more interesting than having to backtrack through an area because the game forces you to. Another nice touch is the fact that partway through the game, the normal forgotten crossroads become overrun with infection changing this area permanently. Enemies get tougher and some of the paths are blocked off. This area is the first in the game, so many of the enemies are not too hard to defeat, since these will be the very first enemies you encounter in the game. Once the player powers up a little bit, the enemies here become almost trivial to deal with. That is, until the crossroads get infected. This change brings the enemies up to the player's level, bringing some new considerations for the player to consider while backtracking through the crossroads. And this makes traveling through the very first area much more engaging and interesting. On top of its layered level design, Hollow Knight also goes out of its way to remove the tedium of backtracking as much as possible. Of course, some of this is accomplished through the layered level design, which can open up faster paths between two points. On top of incorporating level paths that aid the player's travels, Hollow Knight also has other methods to reduce the tedium of backtracking. One of the largest methods to eliminate tedious backtracking are the stag stations, which can transport the player to specific points across the map. These stag stations are all across the map, but they aren't so common that they destroy the sense of exploration and eliminate the need to learn level layouts. Players still need to familiarize themselves with the world in order to know which stag station will put them closest to where they need to go, as well as navigating to that point once they get there. Late into the game, 
the player unlocks the Dream Gate ability, which accomplishes pretty much the same thing as the Stag Stations, but the player has more control over where they teleport. However, perhaps this game's greatest way to make backtracking more manageable is its use of shortcuts. Hollow Knight uses all kinds of shortcuts, some of which are breakable walls, switches, or doors that the player can open to get from point A to point B. The genius of these secrets is that they reward observant players who notice small details in the environment with a faster or easier path through the level. Not only does the game use breakable walls to make backtracking easier, but Team Cherry also uses them at the ends of long offshoots to bring the player back to the main path quickly so the player doesn't need to backtrack through the area they just completed. All of these tactics are used to make backtracking much less tedious and streamlining the process of moving through older areas as much as possible. Through all of these methods, Hollow Knight manages to make its world interesting the first time you explore it and the future times you explore it, which is a huge advantage to a game designed around exploring an interconnected world. Backtracking is oftentimes just a boring trek through a challenge that the player has already completed. Backtracking usually isn't fully enough to kill a player's interest in a game, but Hollow Knight shows that backtracking can be much more interesting. I hope that other games can learn from Hollow Knight in the future, and in more ways than just how to handle backtracking. Frankly, there is a wealth of great design decisions that Hollow Knight brings to the table that didn't quite fit the scope of this video. If you haven't played this game, I highly recommend that you check it out. That being said, feel free to like, subscribe, and comment. Any bit of feedback helps, and I would really appreciate it. This has been Chariot Rider. Have a good day.